What is this odd ass noise? My idle air control? Yeah, sure enough. Welcome back to video three of starting and tuning a Honda K series engine using a standalone ECM on my garage floor. In the last video, we got it running for the very first time on the Mega Squirt. In this one, we're gonna clean up some signals, get the thing to run a little better, a lot smoother. It had some sync loss problems. Watch how we fix those sync losses. It should be informative and entertaining. I'm gonna turn the motor over by hand and we're gonna see if we can see voltages rise and drop here. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> Both circuits do it. So there's 12 teeth on the crank. Actually, there's 12 plus one. So it should only take me, what, 30 degrees of rotation to change that signal from high to low. Look how cool that is, guys. That is a crank signal working in ultra slow motion. Okay, I've installed a wideband oxygen sensor onto this motor. I just have a short piece of tailpipe here and luckily the bung was in that already. This is a little piece of used pipe and the wiring is just sort of uh, zip tied in place. Of course the crank signal is down here and the two cam signals are at the back of the head. Each cam has its own uh, signal. We're using the exhaust cam to trigger the sequential because this cam is stationary. The intake cam obviously can be varied so we don't use that for triggering. So the oscilloscope reading of the crank signal before and after that VR processor chip kind of revealed that I had a shark wave signal. Check it out. That shark wave signal kind of indicates that I don't have a pull up or a strong enough pull up on the uh, crank sensor part of that circuit. So what I did is I pulled the make squared apart and I added a, uh, a 330 ohm resistor from a five volt port over to the output, the VR uh, output, which is the pin that actually goes to the crank sensor. So we're gonna give it a shot right now. I think uh, it might clean up the signal and we'll see if I can uh, rev past 2000. Turn on fuel, fuel pressure, wide bands ready. Radiator is still not totally hooked up. I'm gonna check the timing. I think I have it fixed at 15 degrees. Turn that fuel pump back up. All right, this thing is running good, dude. That res that resolved the problem. It just needed a five volt pickup. It was uh, just a one little wire connection within the mega squirt. The thing's running clean now, so uh, very very excited. <laughs> Why do we care about having that perfect square wave on the crank signal? Since the oscilloscope shows what the voltage is on that wire over time, we can see that every time that the voltage goes up to five volts, every pulse, it's taking time to get there. It builds up very slowly and then it drops off right away. And what happens if, if your signal is taking time to rise, then when you get up in the higher RPMs, when you have less time between pulses, that means you're not gonna get your full pulse. It's not gonna get to that five volts by the time the next pulse comes. If that voltage never reaches five volts, then the ECM will never know that a tooth existed there. That's exactly why we're having dropout is because the pulses couldn't rise fully by the time the next pulse came in. It was losing sync and cutting fuel, cutting spark. This pull-up resistor took care of that and the voltage rises super sharp, super fast. And by the time the next pulse comes, the thing has already gotten to five volts and it has the full signal there. The ECM gets to see it and it stays in sync. <laughs> 